There'll be some positioning on these option expiration ahead of the weekend. Um, I am Stephen Davis, Senior Market Strategist, RJO Futures, Chicago, Illinois. Friday, February 19th, here to talk to you about commodities, the grain markets, uh, corn market. We, we got March uh, options expire today, so there'll be some positioning on these option expiration ahead of the weekend. Um, earlier in the week, corn and soybeans rallied 8 to 12 cents. That's good, good for the U.S. farmer. They've got a lot of, uh, of grain stored, and they're going to need cash here very soon for the 2016 planting season. So any rallies in these grain markets will be perfect timing for the U.S. farmer, and it's going to be a seller uh, uh, in any of uh, the rallies. Soybean market. So it's February now, and all these soybeans in, in Brazil, um, the majority of them are pollinating. So everything's just about fine there, and, and all this news is into the markets. All it, in the last report bearish on soybeans. There's a lot of soybeans in the world. And yet the highs this week on November beans are 894. So very, very impressive how soybeans are holding in here. Also, there's a massive short position and, and, and this, this creates uncertainty and the markets don't like uncertainty. So maybe these short positions in soybeans and wheat in particular, this is gonna hold these, uh, the, the markets together here going into the spring. It's a crowded trade being short soybeans, corn, and wheat. Remember that. So uh, the wheat market, um, the USA was always the biggest exporter of wheat. That's not the case anymore. Canada's number one. Um, we're going we're gonna to have to be careful because soon Russia could be number two and U.S. will be the third uh, um, wheat exporter in the world. Remember, I bring this up from time to time. Russia's a big player now in wheat, and they're going to continue to be that way. Two things. Two things are really important here on the weather as we move into the spring planning. And this is well documented, and we've been talking about it every week. Number one, the transition, the weather cycle from El Nino to La Nina. We know what to expect in El Nino, and it, 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 it met its terms uh, to the T. And maybe this was the third strongest El Nino in the history of the world. Now what follows, we don't know. And a lot of times it can be um, uh, hot and dry in the summer. Uh, so it just is, it's unknown. And, and number two now is when you get excessive rainfall in the fall, Typically, that can be a hot and dry summer scenario. We had record rain in November, December. Remember the Mississippi River flooded in January? It never does that. So be on the lookout for this weather cycle change. Um, going forward, crude oil is real cheap, and our dollar is real strong. And where we go from here, nobody knows. So call me. Sometimes you talk about markets, and good ideas for trades will come to the forefront. Everyone have an excellent weekend. Thank you. Futures and options on futures may involve substantial risk and may not be suitable for all investors.